What's going on guys? You guys asked for it. So today we're going to dive into some Linux commands that I think are absolutely crucial that you learn to start your navigation and learning journey into Linux. What's going on guys? Cyber Tom here back for another video. And for those of you that do not know me or are not familiar with the channel, this channel is all about IT education. If this interests you, watch this video. If you like it, subscribe down below. So I have people ask me all the time, what are the most important tools in security to learn, to start out and to get the understanding of? One of those most important tools on this list of mine is Linux. Linux is an operating system that sometimes most folks new to IT just don't have any understanding of because it's not really something the daily user uh, puts their feet into. Most people are just using Windows. Once you get into the IT world, you're gonna start to see that Linux is highly used in the world of IT. It's something that you should know, one of the fundamentals of cybersecurity, of networking, of system administration, of IT in general. It's just something that you need to learn. It goes right alongside with knowing Windows, uh, Python, and we'll get into those videos another time. But for today, we're gonna dive through the top Linux commands that I think that you should know to start your journey into Linux. Now, I like to use Parrot OS, that's just me. It's the operating system that I like the most intuitively. I like the interface. You can use Kali Linux as well. Kali is another great tool. This is just one of those things, it's to each their own. It really just depends on what you like. And once you find the one you like, just roll with it. Today, we're gonna be in Parrot OS. Now, I should start by saying, I'm gonna be doing these commands out of root just because this is my system and I know the commands that I'm typing in. For somebody new, consider not working out of the root directory and just working out of the typical user this way that you don't break anything if you're brand new. What you'll need to do is just put sudo su at the beginning of some of these commands. If they're not working for you, you need some privileged access. Make sure when you're setting up uh, a Linux environment that you remember the password because that's something that I did uh, a long time ago when I was starting out is just always forgetting the password. Now I make sure to always write it down. This way, when you hit sudo su, it's gonna ask for the password, you got it, you're good to go. So the first command that I think is absolutely imperative that you learn in Linux is gonna be ls. The ls command is gonna list out any files inside of the current directory that you're in. Let's look at it real quick. It's easy as typing ls. This is gonna show you some of the folders and directories that are in this root. The next command that I wanna show you guys is CD. CD stands for change directory. Now that you have these directories listed out, you're gonna to wanna to get into one of them, right? So what you're gonna do is come over here and you're gonna say CD, let's say user. Now we'll use the same command again, LS, and now this displays all the repositories. Say you get yourself into a few different directories and you just wanna go back all together to the root. I have an easy tool for that as well. When you do the CD space forward slash, you're gonna take yourself back to that root directory, the one that we started with right here. And you'll see right here, it will change back to the root. And here we are right here. This is a great tool for when you really get into the roots of some of these directories, you don't wanna keep going back, back, back. CD space forward slash, it just whips you right back to that root directory you started at. The next command that we're gonna talk about is called the make directory command. The command's abbreviation is MKDIR. So let's take a look at that. So now we wanna make a directory. Disclaimer, this is one of the commands that you will need root privileges for. So simply type in sudo su 
make there. For me, I'm just gonna type make there, which is gonna make me the directory that we want. And I'm gonna say make directory test. And now let's do Cybertom, that sounds cooler, I think. So now if we hit LS again, now look what we got here, Cybertom. So we just made ourselves a folder. So now what do we put into a folder? Well, we put some text, how are we gonna do that? That brings me to the next command. The next command is gonna be the touch command. This is gonna enable you to make a TXT file with some text in it. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna simply CD into Cybertom, which is the directory we just made. Hit enter. Let's see, if we LS, what's here? Nothing's here. So now we're gonna say touch, which means that we're gonna make a file here and we'll call it test. Now, if we do an LS, we have our test TXT file. Now we're in Linux, right? So how do we open this file so that we can add some text to it? Well, that's where text editors come into play. There's a lot of text editors out there. The one that I like to use is nano, and that's gonna be our next command. So now we wanna add some text to this test file that we just created. How are we gonna do that? We're simply gonna type in nano and the name of the file. Now we have ourselves a GUI and a place where we can add some text. So let's just do this. Let's start naming off some pets. Let's say dog, cat, zebra, lizard, and that's fine for now. Now to save this, you're just gonna hit a control S and then to exit, we're gonna hit a control X. So now that text that I just put into that file is gonna be there saved. Let's check it out. We'll hit another LS. Oh, now we're at the test file again. And that brings us right to our next command. How are we gonna see what is inside of this file? So what we're gonna use next is a command cat. Cat is gonna enable us to be able to read and print out everything that we just put into that TXT file. Let's check it out. We're gonna do a cat and then just the name of that file. And bam, there's all the text that we just added to that nano text editor. It's that simple. These are important commands. You really need to get a good understanding of them because of the commands you're gonna to have to keep coming back to. So. What if you have a long file now? What if this file has you know, pages and pages and lines and lines of code or text or whatever it is, and you just wanna know where a certain word or a certain sentence is, what do you do then? You guessed it, that is our next command. The next command is gonna be grep. And what grep allows you to do is just pull out certain data from within a file. Let's do that real quick. So what I'm gonna use here is called a pipe command. What we're gonna do is use that cat command. That's gonna say, show us all of the information and then we're gonna say test and that's gonna tell us, show us all the information inside of the test folder. Then we're gonna use a pipe, which is pretty much saying do that and do this. Real quick guys, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is NordPass. NordPass is a great partner to CyberTom, and I have been working with this team for a while. Their products are great. Their customer support has been great. And this group is dedicated to bringing secure, reliable tools to the consumer. So the tool I wanted to talk about today was their data breach scanner. So NordPass functions as a password manager. These passwords that you have stored are being scanned for the latest breaches to inform you if your password has been breached. Now this is something a lot of password managers do not do. And it shows you very clearly the passwords that were breached and the ones that you should be resetting. The level of convenience in NordPass has been something that I like. You can see here that you have a few credentials. You can easily click on the credentials you wanna share, share them to whatever group or name you want to, give them rights and they're shared. And that simply, you have made a convenient way to share passwords.
One of the most annoying things for me is when you're filling out all of your detailed information, your name, your address, your street address, everything like that. With NordPass, look how easily it pulls up all of your information, throws it into the text boxes of any given site that you're working off of and easily allows you to move on to your next task. Not only does it work with your personal information, you can do the same with credit card information that you have stored securely on their tool. Just the same, you can pull up NordPass, click your credentials your, or your credit card information, and there you go. Now you have just purchased the item, you didn't type in a bunch of credit card numbers, and you're good to go now. So if you're interested in NordPass, I'll put the link up here as well as down in the description. Let me know if you like the tool. It's going to be at nordpass.com slash cybertom. If you like it, let me know, comment down below, and I would love to hear your feedback. So what we got here is we're going to do a cat test space pipe, and it's going to say, and what? What do you want me to do with that text that we find? Well, I want you to grep, and I want you to grep what? The word zebra. We hit enter, and as you can see, the phrase zebra was pulled from that txt file for us and it's that simple guys now this gets way more in depth you can go extremely into depth with this but this is the basics and this is the point of this is that i want you to understand these basics so that you can build off of it now another couple cool commands that you can do as well is history history is going to show you all the commands that we just did here this way you can easily see what command that you just chose. This one right here is what we ran. We'll copy this. And now we can just put it right here. So you don't have to keep going back, going through the commands and finding the right one that you just used. This is an easy way to do that. Another couple cool things you can do in Linux is the date command. Quickly and easily show you the date as well as the time with the time zone. You can also use a command called the man command. This is gonna give you a manual for some of these commands to show you how to use them. Let's do an example now. So we talked about the grep command. Let's see what happens when we type in man grep. It's going to give us a description here on exactly how to use this command and the different parameters that you can use to initiate the command. You can go through this for any command and find very helpful, useful information that will show you exactly how to use the command the way it was intended. The next command we're going to talk about is the echo command. The echo command is simply going to say, say this or print this on the screen. So let's take a look at it real quick. We're gonna do echo, hi, I am CyberTom. And it says exactly what I told it to say. It says, hi, I am CyberTom. This is gonna print information, but how else can we use this? Let's see, if I wanna do echo, hello, and then I'm gonna use this. What do you think this is gonna do? This is gonna forward that text that I just put in there and append it to whatever file I want. So what's the file that we were working on? Test, right? So let's append it to test. Now what do you think happened? Stop the video right now, comment down below. Let me know what you think just happened with that echo man, no cheating. Let's check it out. Let's go into cat. And we're going to cat the test. And as you saw, hello has been added to the bottom of that list. Now what happens if we do an up arrow, which brings up our previous text, and we take away one of these. Pause the video, comment down below, and let me know what you think, no cheating. So we hit enter. Now let's take a look what happened to test. There's only the word hello. So keep this in mind when you're using this tool that if you only use one, you are going to 
prepend that text to the document and everything else in there is gone. Two, you're appending. So that's what you're gonna use most of the time is appending. So what we did there was just said, hey, print out the word hello and put this word into this file test and prepend it, nothing else is there. Up here, we did the opposite. We said append and put it at the bottom of the list. Very cool tool, very useful tool. Now I have two last commands that I think that you should know. And guys, if you're loving this content, I'm telling you right now, comment down below. We can go on for days in Linux commands uh, that are useful in different ways we can use them. So I'll make another video for you guys for some more things. Let me know down in the comments. The last two commands that we're gonna do are really upkeep commands, commands that you should be running periodically in your system. That's gonna be the apt-get install update. Now what's this gonna do? This is gonna update the index files. Now, how do we update the whole packages themselves, the package? So how we're gonna do that is going to be an app get install upgrade. You wanna be running both of these commands periodically in your Linux environment to keep things up to date and patched. This is a good upkeep method for you and something to keep all of your libraries up to date. Guys, I hope that this has really helped to show you some of the basic commands in Linux and some different things that you could be doing in Linux to get your feet wet and start to navigate the file system. There's so much more to this and I'm gonna go into more depth all about Linux. Comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you wanna hear about next. Any commands or any tools in Linux anything guys i love to hear your responses and uh it keeps me on my heels to know exactly what this awesome community is looking for next so i will catch you guys in the next video and i will see you later